6.9, use of trigonometrical identities, tan theta equals sine over cos, and sine squared plus cos squared equals one. Okay, this is part of my ultimate revision guide to further maths GCSE. This is the geometry section. Um, the index button for geometry, this will take you back to the index of geometry. And any exam questions that I've done on this topic, I will put links into down here so you can practice. Okay, so we're gonna learn to use these two um, uh, trigonometrical identities. This is actually the definition of tan. So tan is tan theta is sine theta divided by cos theta, and these two things um, add up to one. So uh, what we're going to do is going to run through these three questions. You might want to have a go at these before I do, so to see if you know how to do this already, or if, where your problems lie, or wh what it is you, you're not sure about. Um, but whenever you're looking at these sort of things, um, you need to be keeping these in mind to be able to, to do things. Okay, so have a look at question one. Okay, um, given that the sine, sine theta of one third and theta of choose, work out the exact value of cos theta. Okay, so to solve this, um, we're going to use this identity here. We, we're told what sine theta is, so we can work out sine squared theta. Um, that allows us to work out what cos squared theta is, and then we can just square root to find cos. Um, and we're told theta is obtuse. So, I'll come back to what the obtuse bit is is to do with in a minute. Okay, so sine sine theta is a third, so we've got one third squared because that's sine squared theta. So sine squared is one third squared plus cos squared theta equals one. Um, so cos squared theta equals one minus one third squared. Um, one third squared is one ninth. As one times one is one, three times three is nine, so one minus one ninth is eight ninths. So cos theta equals the square root of eight ninths. Now when you do a square root, there's a positive and a negative value for square root, and that's what this obtuse bit is coming into, because if we think back to our sketching of the graph for cos, um, this is 90 degrees here, and this is 180, and this is 270, and this is 360. Okay, my 270 is not really good, it's not important. This is the bit. So the obtuse is, means it's between 90 and 180, and cos of any angle between 90 and 180 is a negative value. So when we've got a plus or minus square root, um, because it's obtuse, that's telling us that it must be the negative value. So cos theta is equal to minus the square root of eight over nine. Um, we could we could simplify that a little bit. Um, I, I don't know how, how much detail they want you to go into here. It doesn't say simplify it. So that should be okay. But um, we could break this into root 8 over root 9. Um, and root 8 is square root 4 times 2. And square root 4 is 2. So this is root 2 root 2. That's what square root 8 is. And root 9 is 3. So we could write that, but I think this is fine. I don't, I don't think we need to go any further than those. Not asking us to simplify our answer or to rationalize a denominator or anything like that. But the key thing here is um, one, to use the formula, get to the value where you've got positive and minus, and then to realize that this obtuse is telling us the negative value. So you might lose a mark if you just got to this bit and left it and didn't realize which value you were gonna take, or maybe just put the positive value. Okay, so, um, that's the use of the sine and cos, sine squared plus cos squared. Okay, we've got another question here. Um, two sine x equals cos x for naught to 90. Um, well, what we're gonna look at here is this, sine, sine theta divided by cos theta. So um, to solve this, uh, much easier to divide by cos. So if we divide both sides by cos, we get sine x divided by cos x and cos x divided by cos x is one. So we've got um, sine x over cos x. So we've got two lots of sine x over cos x, which is two tan x, that equals one. And so tan x equals a half. Okay, so let's bring in the calculator to finish this off. Um, so we want to do the inverse tan to get back to the angle. So shift tan of a half, which is 0.5. Is 26. So x is equal to tan to the minus 1 
a half, which is approximately 26.6 degrees. Okay, and that's between 0 and 90, so that's fine. Um, there could be multiple solutions to that, but that um, is the one we want. Okay, next question. Okay, so we've got question three here. We've got to try and prove this. As soon as we see squares, we should be thinking about sine squared plus cos squared and tan, we should be thinking about sine over cos. Um, we've got to prove this is, is identical to one, so it's equal to one. So what we need to do is forget about this side and just try to make this equal to one or identical to one. So to do that, we need to combine it. So let's just think about what that would be like. Um, tan squared is sine squared x over cos squared x. Um, we can combine it over cos squared, so we get 1 minus sine squared x over cos squared x. And because sine squared, let me write this because, um, this uh, identity, identity sine squared plus cos squared, you should really also know it in different forms. So when you take the sine squared over to the right hand side or the cos squared, you end up with things like this. So you've got um, cos squared theta is identical to 1 minus sine squared theta. Okay, so we can replace the 1 minus sine squared theta with uh, cos squared theta, but obviously not theta, it's x in this case, so cos squared x all over cos squared x, and that gives us 1. So that's identical to 1 because we divide it by itself. Um, and we can just say something like QED, quotum S demonstratum. So it just, it just says that we've just proved it. So we got started with this, combined it, altered it, ended up with the answer which we we're trying to prove. So we've done it. So that's using trigonometrical identities. Um, we had a question we have one question where we just use the sine, sine squared cos squared formula, one where we just use the tan equals sine over cos formula, and one where we combined both of them into one to be able to prove things or show things or work things out. So that's using trigonometrical identities. This one here is probably about as tricky as it gets. Um, so long as you can see your way through, there's only two formulas to use. So just keep trying things, get used to tans going into sines over coses, get used to cos squares or sine squares being used in this way, and you should be fine.